Well, good morning. Good morning, dear hearts. Come on in. Welcome to uh, Tuesday. It is our daily devotion, our Marketplace Daily Devotion. It is time. Yes, it is. I hope that you're ready for a break. I hope that you are ready to receive an awesome word from the Lord today. And we want to give God praise on this day, May the 10th. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad. So I decree and declare over you this morning that this is your day and you shall rejoice that everything, amen, will be well in your soul today. And so we're still in the book of Acts. I told you we're going to be in that this book for as long as it takes, maybe uh, next month as well, uh, because we're just really on the fourth chapter. Uh, we've been talking about uh, the man that was healed at the gate of beautiful, uh, which I told you um, last week that it also represents the courts of women, where women would gather together to pray. But in the fourth chapter, we find out that because of what uh, Peter and John had done, because of the power that was operating through their lives, they were arrested. Yes, uh-huh. They were arrested. So there are some things I want to point out in this next chapter. So we're going to be talking probably uh, from the first to the 15th verse because I'm not going to take up much time today and then we'll maybe try to conclude this chapter on uh, uh, tomorrow or the next day when I upload the next video. But listen at this. You know, let me tell you, people, let me tell you, those of you who are listening, we must, I cannot say this enough. I cannot stress this enough. We must have the power of the Holy Ghost. In the seventh chapter, in the seventh verse of the fourth chapter of Acts, there's a question that is asked. And it says, by what power or by what name have you done this? Now, this is a question that the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the, the, the uh, well, uh, let me just read it to you so I don't misquote anything. It says, now as they spoke uh, to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple. So these were the priests in the temple. Yeah, those who you would have thought would have been uh, honored by what they were witnessing. Uh, but it says that here, the priests, uh, the captain of the temple, which was the priests and the Sadducees, came upon them being greatly disturbed. I mean, they were disturbed by the miracle that had taken place with this man who had been lame since his mother's womb. And this man, I believe it's in the um, uh, uh, the the 22nd verse of this same chapter, it says that this man was over 40 years old. <laughs> but you know what I like about this? How God will, he will uh, make your enemies be your footstool. He will prepare a table in the presence of your enemies. Hallelujah. This man was placed at the temple. He had been there for 40, over 40 years for people to, they were well known with the fact that he was not able to walk. They were well known with the fact that he had been laying from birth. It was no denying that this miracle had taken place. But it was the priest, it was the people of the temple, the priest and his family that brought these charges against Peter and John. Have you been thrown in jail or thrown in prison? Or have you been arrested for preaching the gospel? That is what was going on with this. Peter and John was arrested by what power? What I, what I realized this morning as I was reading this is that we have people in the church. <laughs> Don't get mad at me, okay? I'm just telling you the truth. We have people in the church that are trying to operate in a power that they know nothing of. We have people in the church that have not been given the authority to operate in the power that they're trying to use. Okay, well, uh, uh, I believe it was the sons of Sceva, uh, the, the sons of Sceva in Acts, the 19th chapter, that was trying to operate in a, in a power and an authority. You know, as I, as I was, uh, let me just put it another way. Maybe you understand it this way. By what authority or by what jurisdiction? 
You know, I live in the I live in the county of Hillsborough, uh, Florida, in the in the county of Hillsborough, Florida. So uh, the the police officers in this county they have they have been given the authority. All right, they have been given the power and the authority by way of or by the name of by the judicial system that operates under Hillsborough County, under that name. What authority are you trying to use uh, the name of Jesus when you don't even know him? You're trying to operate in an authority and a power that you have no relationship with under the, uh, under the judicial system of the courts of heaven. <laughs> yeah, you, you'll get that about midnight. Under the judicial system of the courts of heaven, you have been trying to operate and use power that you don't even understand, that you don't even have a relationship with. You got to have a relationship with Jesus in order to use his name. You just can't use his name because it sounds good or because it looks good. You got to have a relationship with the one that gives you access to the power. Do you get that? Okay, all right. I'm glad you get that. So here we have one a point. I'm going to make several points here. Here we have Peter and John being arrested for preaching the gospel. We have Peter and John that had been arrested for preaching the gospel. Then, even in the midst of the arrest, it says that God kept adding to the church. Yeah, and in and, and, and verse 4, it says, you know, 5,000 was added. You have 3,000 that was added in chapter 2 after they received the Holy Ghost and Peter went out and preached with such power, it says that 3,000 was added to the church the same day. You say you have the power of God? When you open your mouth, when you speak, something should happen. When you talk about Jesus and share your testimony, lives should be changed. I'm talking about the power of God. Another point, it was the high priest and their family that was behind the arrest. I'm going to let you go back and read Acts, the fourth chapter, 1 through verse 15. When you operate under the power of God, you're not going to, you know, you're going to have people that come against you. You need to be ready for that. Your own family may come against you. People that you work with may come against you. People that you go to church with even may come against you. When you begin to stand up for what is right and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, the high priest and their family, these were people in the temple that should have been backing Peter and John. But instead, they were the one that caused them to be arrested. Another point. Peter, it says, was filled with the Holy Ghost. Okay? It said, then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said to them, the power will give you boldness. <laughs> it will give you, they used to call it in the old days, holy boldness. Having the power of God will make you stand up and speak out. It would give you boldness. Point, another point here in verse 10, it talks about how when the uh, uh, Pharisees and the Sadducees, the high priests, Caiaphas and, and Alexander, when they all began to try to gang up on Peter and John, when they all came and, and began to interrogate, I think that's the word that we probably use in today, when they began to interrogate them, they pointed out and they gave the credit. When they asked, by whose name, whose authority are you out here talking about this man that's been raised from the dead? Peter said, it, it, you, you, you spoke so well. 
Because it is that man. It is that man that you crucified. Yeah. <laughs> but my God raised him from the dead. It is that man that you rejected as a cornerstone, but now he has become the chief cornerstone. When people began to wonder about this God that you serve, instead of you being shy and wanting to be timid and wanting to, you know, shy away from them because you don't want nobody to know that you saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, which might be a clue that you're not. Because when you have the Holy Ghost, it gives you a holy boldness. Ah, my so shall I say? It gives you a boldness like nothing else. Who has a candle? And put it up under a bushel. Who lights a candle? And put it up under a bushel. He says you are the light of the world. A candle that cannot be hid. When you have the Holy Ghost. You become bold. So bold that, that people that you know may think you're crazy. <laughs> ah yeah yeah. He said this God. This Jesus of Nazareth. I want you to know exactly who I'm talking about and where he came from. When they ask, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Yeah, this good thing. That's the name. Uh-huh. See, so you got to have a relationship. You just can't know the name. You got to have a relationship. And then the next point I want to make before we get off here, because I'm excited. I'm excited, guys. <laughs> After... They began to question Peter and John. And after, you know, they began to interrogate him. Listen here. In verse number 14, they could not even, they didn't have any leg to stand on. It says, and seeing. Let me just read it here before. It's my last point here. It says, and seeing the man whom or who had been healed standing with them. Where is the proof of the Holy Ghost that you say you have? Where is the proof and the manifestations of the works that you say that you're doing that are, should be good works? Where is the proof? Where is the proof? He said, they shall know you by your fruit. Where is the proof? When the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the high priests and the Sanhedrin council, when they began to look at the proof, the man that had been lame from birth, the man that had been sitting at the temple, look how God just set this up. 40 years of setting this up where he could not, the miracle that took place could not be denied. They could not even deny it. Let me read it again. I, I just got so excited. <laughs> now seeing the man who had been healed, standing with them. He, I told you in, in the devotion that we did on Friday, he didn't, one of, the, one of the things I told you, when God delivers you, when God heals you, you don't leave the people that God used to bring healing and miracles to your life. This man was standing there with them. They could say nothing against Peter and John. Why? Because the proof was in the pudding. Because the man was standing there that the miracle had been performed on. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves saying, what shall we do to these men? For indeed, a notable miracle had been done through them and it is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem. Look at God. Let me tell you, when you do what you're supposed to do, when you know him, even your enemies, God says, I will put a, I will prepare a table in the midst of your enemies. Even your enemies cannot deny the wonder working power of Jesus Christ. Even your enemies cannot deny you just keep living holy. You just keep doing what God has called you to do. 
And he's going to allow everybody to see the God in you. The, talking about the power. Who, under whose authority, under whose power are you operating in? Mm -hmm. The sons of Sceva thought they could use the name of God illegally. And you saw what happened to them. The spirit came out of the man and evil spirit came out of the man and entered into them and made them run out of, out of the city naked. You don't want your nakedness to be exposed because you're around here using the name of Jesus illegal. There's a price to pay for the anointing. And you know what that price is? Holiness. Walking in holiness. Doing what is right. Telling the truth. Living a righteous and holy life. Be ye holy for he is holy. I'm talking about the power. I'm talking about the power. Amen. If you're not seeing the power of God operating and manifesting in your life, then you might want to ask yourself, under whose authority have you been operating under? Under what jurisdiction have you been operating under? Are you operating under the course of heaven? I'm a suku shabbat. Are you operating under the course of heaven? It's the power of God pulsating through your veins. Do you have that holy boldness that you don't care what happens, who come, who go? But you're going to live for God anyway? Are you seeing the signs and wonders and miracles take place around you in, in, in the church that you're attending through your life? Still talking about the power of the Holy Ghost? Acts 4th chapter 1 through 15. It's an awesome thing, guys. It's a beautiful thing. So I pray that today you go in power. You go out and share the gospel of Jesus Christ in power. Amen? Amen. So until our next drop with our daily devotion, this is Recharge. And I hope you've been recharged today with our Marketplace Daily Devotion. Smooches. Mm -hmm.